Greetings, Grade 8s, and welcome to our Natural Sciences lesson brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. If you have a question during the lesson, please send an email with your question to grade8 at worksheetcloud.com. A few hints and tips during these strange times. The one thing I'd like to remind you is please remember that when you do go outside, into um, common places like when you go for a walk or or if you do happen to need to go to the shops or wherever you're going to be interacting with other people please remember to wear your face mask then when you do have to wear your face mask please remember to try and keep your hands away from your face as much as possible so when you need to put the face mask on and off please try and only use it um, by touching the elastic bands and then when the face mask is on your face, please try and avoid as much as possible of touching your hair and your nose and your eyes and your mask all the time. So try and keep your hands away from your face. Then please always remember to wash your hands and you need to wash your hands for as long as possible. And the one way you can do that is sing happy birthday twice. And then you need to wash your hands with an alcohol based cleaner above 70 percent but just normal soap and water is absolutely fine i do encourage you as much as possible to stay at home and when you are at home and when you if you do go out please remember your social distancing and then it is important to take your temperature and if you are not feeling well and you have a fever please consult your doctor my name is Mrs. Ernston and I am the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. Thanks so much for joining our lesson today. If this is your first time in the lesson, please will you go back and have a look at our other lessons. There's lots of fun things in those lessons for you to do. And please will you remember that I love you to take notes during this lesson as we discuss things and go through things. So please have some paper and pen or your files and books ready. It is also important to keep a record of the work you do so that when you do return back to class, you are able to share this work with your teacher. I do know that your teachers and friends are missing you incredibly, and I can only imagine how difficult it is for you to have to do this online learning by yourself, but I do commend your efforts and your progress, your motivation and your determination. I really am so proud of you. Just another reminder, if you do have any questions throughout this lesson, please send them in an email to grade8 at worksheetcloud.com. The topic for today's lesson is density, and we're having a look at the density of solids and liquids. We're going to have a look at some problem-solving question. I'll work through one together with you. Um, and we're going to have a look at the mathematical relationships between density, mass, and volume. This is actually the conclusion of our lessons on density. So I do encourage you to go back and view the previous three or four lessons and catch up all your knowledge on density. The first activity I'd like you to engage in this morning is um, I see, I think, I wonder. And what that entails is you having a look at the picture on the left and get up close to the screen it really is an amazing picture we have different types of alcohol we've got rubbing alcohol which is like methylated spirits we then we have canola oil and another layer of water and then another layer of dish soap and milk and syrup and honey and then in between all of this, we've got some solid substances that appear to be floating like wood and a, a dice and a steel nut. So I want you to write down a list of these things that you can see. Once you have written down this list, I would like you to spend a moment collating your thoughts. When you see these things, these liquids and solids floating or sinking or floating on top of each other, what does it make you think? So I think, and then I want you to jot down some of the things that it causes you to think about. And then I want you to let your mind be creative and I want you to let your mind wander. And I want you to think about your 
critical thinking skills. So when you see this, it's made you generate a list of thoughts. How does that make you wonder? If you sit back, what do you wonder about? And I want you to generate a list of everything that you wonder about. So if you need to pause the video at this point, please do. You can rejoin me when you have finished doing this engaging activity. So this is the problem that we are going to be working through in today's lesson. So you will find this question attached to um, the worksheets and there are a lot of worksheets for you to complete at the end of today's lesson. You don't have to do them all today, but there's some lovely revision questions for you to go through. So let's have a look at today's exercise. Study the information regarding the following substances and then answer the questions. Consult the table of densities where necessary. So here we have liquids A, B, C, E and G and they've given us a solid D and F. And then they've given us the density for substance A, B, C, D and E. But then for F, they've given us the measurements of a rectangular block. They've told us that the block is 30 grams and it has a length of 3 centimeters, a breadth of 2 centimeters and a height of 1 centimeter. And then for G, they've given us um, a mass of 144 grams and they've told us that the block is 120 cubic centimeters. So put your thinking caps on and let's try and go through these seven questions together. Will liquid G float on liquid A? Yes, liquid G float on liquid A. Identify the pure liquid B. So we'll need a uh, density table to answer that. Is C a metal or a non-metal? So again, we'll need to go and have a look at the density table. Which one of the solids has the highest density? So there we have a density for D, but we'll need to go and calculate the density for F. In which of these liquids, B or G? So we have two liquids, liquid B and liquid G. Which one will D float deeper in? So another way of saying that is which one will D most likely sink more in? Is the statement F will float on C, but F will sink in A true. So we'll need those densities to be able to calculate whether or not that statement is true or false. And then question seven. If we pour A, B and C into a beaker, C will form the bottom layer, and then B will form the top layer which means A will be in the middle layer. Is that true or is that false? So let's go through this question by question. However, I think you should pause the video now and try and answer these by yourself first. So I would give yourself 20 or 30 minutes to go through each of these answers. And then I think when you are done, Come back to the video and then you can work through your answers together with me. So will G float on A? So the density of A is 0,7 grams per centimeters cubed. I took that directly from the information we were given. For G, we need to calculate the density. So in order to do that, we're going to say mass, the, the density of G is the mass of G divided by the volume of G. So here is the mass of G, which is 144 grams, and here is the volume of G, which is 120, 120 centimeters cubed. So if we say 144 divided by 120, we get 1,2 grams per cubic centimeters. So, therefore, G is more dense than A because the density of G is 1,2, whereas the density of A is 0,7. So, G will not float on A. It 
If we have a look at B, it says identify the pure liquid B. So they tell us that it's 1, 0 gram per centimeter cubed. So for that, you need to go and have a look at the density table. So I've given you a density table over here, and there are also density tables attached to the worksheets in our density lessons. And if we have a look at the density table and we go through it, we see that water has a density of 1,00 grams per centimeter cubed. So we can identify B as possibly being water. Is metal, is liquid C a metal or a non-metal specifier? So if we go back to the density table, we will find that C has got a density of 13.6. The density table tells us that this is mercury. And if we go to the periodic table, we will find that mercury is a liquid in its elemental form. So it's a liquid metal and it's mercury. And we represent that with the symbol capital H, lowercase g. Which one of the solids has the highest density? So we have two solids, D and F. D, they've given us the density already for. That's 0,6 grams per centimeters cubed. I think we're going to have to calculate the density for F. So F, we know it's a rectangular block. They've given us the mass. It's 30 grams. And they've given us length and breadth and height. So we then you need to use the equation volume equals length times breadth times height, which is 3 centimeters times 2 centimeters times 1 centimeter. And that will give us a volume of 6 cubic centimeters. So now for solid F, we've got a mass of 30 grams and a volume of 6 cubic centimeters. So then we're going to use the equation density equals mass divided by volume where the density of F equals 30 grams divided by 6, then the density of F is 5 grams per centimeters cubed. So that means the density of D is 0 0.6 grams per centimeters cubed. The density of F is 5 grams per centimeters cubed. So that means that F has got, sorry, that means that F has the highest density because 5 grams per centimeter cubed is greater than 0 0.6 grams per centimeter cubed. Then if we have a look at question 5, in which of the liquids B or G will D float deeper? So we have the calculations for B and G. We've worked them out in our previous exercises, in the previous questions. So the density of G is 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter, and the density for B, which we get off the table, is 1.0 grams per centimeter. And then we've calculated the density of D. It's 0 0.6 grams per centimeter cubed. So if we have a look at it, there is 0.6 grams difference between the density here and there's only 0.4 grams difference between the density here, which means this block is a closer density to 1. If this block was 1 gram per centimeter cubed, it would be floating directly on the surface here. But because it is a little bit lighter, some of the block is going to float, be seen on top and more of the block is going to be seen below the surface. So the concept float deeper is the same conceptually as which as having the closest density to D, which will float deeper in B. So liquid B is 1 gram per centimeter cubed, liquid G is 1.2 grams per centimeter cubed, and solid D is 0 0.6 grams per centimeter cubed. So the densities and masses of the objects you drop into the liquids vary. If the layer of the liquid is more dense than the object itself, the object stays on top of the liquid. 
If the layer of liquid is less dense than the object, the object sinks through the layer until it meets a liquid layer that it is dense enough to hold it up. Let's look at question six. Is the statement F will float on C, but F will sink in A true? So we have a solid block F. I want to see whether it's going to sink or float when I put it in C, and is it going to sink or float when I put it into A? So no, it's false. F is going to sink in both liquids. Because liquid A is 0.7 gram per centimeter cubed, liquid C is 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed, and solid F is 5 grams per centimeter cubed. So it is definitely much more dense than both those liquids. So F will sink in both liquids. That was a tricky one, and I wonder if you got it right. Then we have a look at question 7. And we have liquids A, B, and C. And we want to pour these liquids into a beaker. And we want to work out which will form the bottom layer, which will form the middle layer, and which will form the top layer. So obviously the liquid that is the most dense will be at the bottom. Then you're going to get, um, as you move up the beaker, you are going to decrease in density. So then the next layer is going to be less dense and the top layer is going to be the least dense. So let's see if we can get this right. C, which is 13.0 grams per centimeter cubed, has got the greatest density, so that will be the bottom layer. The next layer will be B, which is 1.0 grams per centimeter cubed. And then the top layer is going to be A, because it's the lowest density, and that is 0.7 grams per centimeter cubed. So we have reached the end of our lesson and the little activity I would like you to do now is I used to think dot 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 and now I think dot dot dot. So before this lesson what did you think about liquids floating on liquids and solids floating on liquids and whether solids will sink or whether solids will float and after working through this exercise and after completing this exercise, what has that made you think about now? So you can pause the video and you can consolidate the lesson by answering, I used to think this, but now I think. Another reminder is that if you have any questions, please email them to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. I would like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing this lesson to you and thank you to you grade 8 for your motivation and determination to join the lesson today. I am so proud of your efforts to be a lifelong learner and I'm so proud of the fact that you're taking learning in your hands and I'm even more proud of the fact that you have chosen to join Worksheet Cloud um, Grade 8 lessons. So I hope you share these lessons with all your friends and you tell all your friends about Worksheet Cloud. And I look forward to you joining me in the next section of work. Have a beautiful day, Grade 8s, and thanks so much for joining me in Worksheet Cloud. Bye.